GP on the move. Topic one: Menorrhagia, abnormally heavy or prolonged menstrual bleeding. Your key knowledge: red flags, looking for structural abnormalities or infection. Note well: none of these would trigger a two-week cancer referral based on most recent NICE guidelines. Number one: persistent intermenstrual bleeding. Number two: pelvic pain or pressure. Number three: dysmenorrhea. Number four: postcoital bleeding. Number five: dyspareunia, and number six: vaginal discharge. In the absence of any of these, a trial of treatment can be initiated without examination or further investigations. However, if any of these symptoms are present, an examination is recommended, often with swabs for MCNS, and that is microscopy, culture, and sensitivity. And chlamydia and gonorrhea. Finally, remember to take a sexual history. Your key elements from the history slash examination. Number one, if examination is normal but the following risk factors are present, you are referring a patient for a hysteroscopy with plus minus endometrial biopsy. And these are a persistent intermenstrual or irregular bleeding. B obesity slash PCOS and that is polycystic ovary syndrome and infrequent but heavy bleeding. C on tamoxifen and D no risk factors but initial treatments have failed. Number two, if however these symptoms are present, send patients for an ultrasound, preferably a transvaginal one, and that is A pelvic pain, B dysmenorrhea. C. Abdominal examination reveals a pelvic mass thought to be a fibroid, or D. The examination was inconclusive for whatever reason. Remember, though, if on examination ascites is present or there is a suspicious pelvic mass not thought to be a fibroid, this is a cancer pathway for ovarian cancer. And here's extra tip number one: be able to explain to your patient what a hysteroscopy is. Hysteroscopy is a procedure where a small camera at the end of a long tube is inserted through the vagina into the womb. This allows the doctor or specialist nurse to have a look inside the womb to look for any causes for the ongoing symptoms. It is usually done as a day case, and staying overnight is not required. The procedure can be done with local anesthetic by numbing the area of the womb. Or under general anesthetic, meaning you are asleep during the procedure. The procedure can take up to 30 minutes, but occasionally can be completed within five to 10 minutes. Now back to menorrhagia. If you are doing investigations or tests, number one, all women should have a full blood count. Number two, up-to-date smears, and that is every three years for 25 to 49 year olds, and every five years for 50 to 64 year olds. Number three, you can consider thyroid function test if hypothyroidism is suggested by other symptoms such as fatigue, constipation, cold intolerance, or hair and skin changes. Number four, you can consider coagulation test if heavy bleeding has been present since menarche, there is evidence of other bleeding problems, or there is a positive family history for bleeding disorders. In terms of management. Number one, first line, Mirena coil. Number two, second line, tranexamic acid, which is an antifibrinolytic. The dose is one gram three times a day for up to four days, and that is initiated when menstruation has started. Alternatively, mefenamic acid, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, at a dose of 500 milligrams three times a day, and this is especially helpful if periods are painful. These two can be combined and are considered non-hormonal methods. Second line, you can also consider combined hormonal contraception if appropriate. Number three, third line, oral progestogens like medroxyprogesterone acetate at 10 milligrams or norethisterone 5 milligrams three times a day between day five and day 26. These are the same drugs one would prescribe for patients wishing to postpone their periods. The former is preferred in patients at risk of VTE, which is venous thromboembolism. An alternative to these two is long-acting progestogens, such as the 12-weekly depo injection.
And here's extra tip number two. If the patient has a fibroid larger than three centimeters and the first two management options have failed, refer for consideration of surgical management. Finally, if trials of treatment are failing or no cause for the heavy menstrual bleeding has been found, refer. And here's your key knowledge one more time. Red flags. Looking for structural abnormalities or infection. Note well, none of these would trigger a two-week cancer referral based on most recent NICE guidelines. Number one, persistent intermenstrual bleeding. Number two, pelvic pain or pressure. Number three, dysmenorrhea. Number four, postcoital bleeding. Number five, dyspareunia. And number six, vaginal discharge. In the absence of any of these, a trial of treatment can be initiated without examination or further investigations. However, if any of these symptoms are present, an examination is recommended, often with swabs for MCNS, and that is microscopy, culture, and sensitivity, and chlamydia and gonorrhea. Finally, remember, you must take a sexual history.